What's going on, Stargate fans? Welcome back to the Stargate Command Live. I'm your host, The Geek Gatsby, Bernie Bregman, and I have a very, very special group of people to my left here. Uh, we have Kieran, who is the editor of Stargate Command, um, and we have the cast of Stargate Origins with us here today, guys. Hello. This is going to be a lot of fun, um, and we're going to talk all about Stargate Origins and the amazing experiences that everybody had on set. Um, so I'd like to first introduce Ellie, who is Catherine Langford. Um, and then we have Philip, who is James Beal. And we have Siobhan, who is Wasif. And this is going to be a really... And Kieran, who was <laughs> no, there no, just a lot of the set and yeah. has a lot of great behind-the-scenes stories um, and, and a lot of moments. Some fun moments, some cool moments, some geeking out, some uh, yeah. shenanigans, maybe. Uh, so we'll get into some of that. Um, I think... Uh, so, so Kieran, why don't you start us off with something uh, behind the scenes? Um, I think the geeking out is is key here because... I got to set maybe like a week late, and so when I got to the warehouse, like, and they had the big, initially they had the big box, like the, the Stargate box there, mm -hmm. I was freaking out about that, because I was like, this is the Langford box. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Langford, Langford box. <laughs> and then it was when I was interviewing you, yeah. and they were destroying said box, mm -hmm. which made the interview really hard, they started putting up the Stargate, and you and I were both like, oh my god. Yeah, we took a moment. Yeah. And we were, yeah. Then that, for like for the rest of the time in the warehouse, that Stargate just kind of like dominate. This is a huge warehouse, and it just dominates. It was like a, a how, how big was it? Twenty feet. That is so a was huge. Donut. Only, only yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, huge metal donut. It was like right? only yeah. two feet smaller than the uh, than any uh, the other ones. So Very it was cool. Pretty pretty huge. Um, but it was just no. It's just been really fun to kind of be on this journey with you guys, kind of seeing it, yeah. like getting shot and interviewing you guys to find out about what it's been like being yeah. in Stargate and now <laughs> it's all out and the fans have seen it. Um, it's it's pretty wild. Yeah, it is. How are you guys feeling about it? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Go. 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 And, uh, yeah. Who still has sand in their shoes? That's um, still all of us. Sand, yeah. sand in my brain from <laughs> that <laughs> shoe. <laughs> I think I still have a sunburn from from the from desert. The desert, for sure. Um, so I, I think one of the questions a lot of fans have is, um, what was everyone's knowledge of the Stargate universe pre uh, getting the script or the audition call? Um, you know, where did you come from in terms of uh, your kind of Stargate knowledge and fandom? Yeah. I'll start. I mean, I can start because I guess uh, maybe I'm the the biggest uh, sci-fi enthusiast. I don't know. Um, we call ourselves nerds, sir. <laughs> nerds. <laughs> right. Own it. Uh, Own it. <laughs> nerds. One of us. Um, I I I knew of. Um, I think we talked about it in our interview mm. uh, that I loved the the film yeah. from 1994, and that was something that I saw really early. I was a really young kid, and I saw that, and then um, and then you know I saw some of the the TV series as well, but I knew of of Stargate um, and, and SG-1 particularly as a kid. And so when, you know, when I got the, the audition sides and there were some certain things, because it wasn't, you know, we weren't saying about what it was, you know, in the, in the process. And I, but I picked up on some things and I was like, I think, <laughs> I think this might be Stargate. <laughs> and, and it turned out to be that. So it was really, that was really special to, to know that I was kind of coming into that. I can kind of feel that excitement, just that smile that you gave. Yeah, like, that's, <laughs> yeah. That's a genuine like. Oh, 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 yes. oh! That's a that's a circular portal. That's that a circular portal. I think that might be, is that the code word circular <laughs> portal? Yeah, yeah that's, that's what they used in the script so that okay. we wouldn't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, um, sure. I actually came on. I only was cast like a a little bit before shooting, so it was kind of obvious through the script that it was Stargate, and my management kind of told me that it was Stargate. And I knew of it, but I hadn't really seen anything. The film came before I was born. And um, yeah, it, I just, I went and watched the film and was like, this is huge. If it's anything like this, this is so exciting. And yeah, kind of went from there. I didn't go into the whole universe and TV stuff because that's before mm -hmm. this Catherine story. And I didn't want to get all muddled up in that. And I wanted to discover things with her and take that journey with her. So yeah, that was kind of my Stargate knowledge before I went in and yeah. That that actually kind of leads to something. So you had a different challenge, I think, than anybody else on set in that you're portraying a character that's been played by two different people before you. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of tell us a little bit about uh, that process and, mm -hmm. and we start to there, but 
you know, you're giving this character a context that we've never been able to see before. Yeah. Um, well, basically, all we know about her before is um, that she lived in Egypt, that she was there, that she was working with her dad. And so, yeah, that, for me, that I just built on that, like what her relationship was with her dad, what her life was like in Egypt as a young woman um, and in the field that she was in and the work that she was doing. And the story kind of led me to all the, gave me all the clues that I needed. I didn't want to go and look at other actors' performances and like copy them. I really wanted to make my own and put my own footprint on this Catherine. And yeah, I think... I mean, I'm I'm happy with everything. You did. I, you stamped that one down. Yeah, no, I absolutely. Nailed the landing. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I hope so. Even the French judge gives us a 10. So. <laughs> Do you feel like a sense of ownership around Catherine now? Do you feel like... Yeah, I think I always did going into it. I mean, I think if you get an acting job, you have to... Well, you should. Um, for me, I want to own it and give it my own flair and... You know, you get a lot of creative license when someone says that you can do a job. So, yeah, I I, uh, I backed myself. Catherine will back herself. So yes, She would. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I know you like you have a big sense of ownership around Wasif. Yeah, you did I from did. the very first time you kind of read the part. Yeah, I, I, I did. I did. The, the first line I read with Wasif. I just knew it, like, and I was in the shower, I remember, and my manager was like, they're not sure if they want to give you Wasif, and I was standing, talking <laughs> to myself, and I was like, I don't understand, I am a Wasif, what are they talking about? That's a really about? good Wasif impression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's what you're doing, a Wasif impression. So, yeah, no, I definitely feel like I, I, I am, that, like, you know, that, in that sense, that, yeah, I... I know Wasif, like, I know Wasif 100%. Yeah. More than anybody else. Is there a lot of you in Wasif? <laughs> so, I mean, a lot of me would be not right to say. I mean, obviously, there are some things. I grew up with uh, two best friends that was a couple, and I was always the third wheel. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> like, in that sense, I do understand the irritation of having to be between... A couple that's your best friend. Like, you know, very close friends yeah. like that. So in that sense, <laughs> yes, there is. Or getting but dragged into it by your best friend's girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, week. I think I think it's just there are some things, but there are a lot of things that's not, you know, at the same time. I mean, this is 1939, was mm -hmm. in Abydos. Um, I'm in LA. It's so boring compared to. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish. Yeah, that's, that's not going on. Yeah. And then what about, because you, you actually, you uh, trained back in the UK, right? Yeah, yeah, I so trained in England um, um, at a drama school there. And so so it was really neat for my first sort of <laughs> role out of drama school to play a Brit. Um, and, you know, it was, and also for someone, you know, I love history. Um, and so the opportunity to, to include that into my preparation and, and kind of go into what it was like to be an officer in sort of pre-war Egypt especially um, it was very much the quiet before the storm so absolutely a lot of people were unprepared they had no idea and there was a lot of and that's an interesting historical thing as well it's just when putting yourself in a mindset where you're on the cusp of something but you have no clue um, on a sort of micro level or, or globally um, so that was a neat a neat thing to kind of put yourself in um, and, and he's just a funny character as well. And, and I think that also just feeds into the world that we were given to play with in terms of our costumes mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. and the sets and the, and the vehicles that you drove so expertly. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, it's just really hard, it's a crazy thing to, to, you know, to operate. It's to like a double clutch, so. right? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, actually, I don't remember. I believe a double clutch with a push button start. It had a push button, it, no, it had a normal clutch. It was just normal, I don't wanna. I, I don't remember it being that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. It. I re yeah, I think we have a slightly different. Yeah. <laughs> I was, that was, I was great. I was really <laughs> good at driving that car. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but that brings up an interesting point. What, what were uh, um, some of the things? So you mentioned costume too, and talk about a little how those costumes transport you to that different time, and how some of the great set pieces and things transport you to another world. Oh, um, I think the most, well, most of my costumes, um, there was only, I had like one vintage piece that was the final scene in episode 10, that, um, floral black top. Yeah. 
um, with the shoulder pad. It had shoulder pads and um, these jodhpurs, these white jodhpurs. And wearing them, the silk kept ripping because it, it was so old. Um, and the, the fabric itself, like I just felt so restricted. Like I couldn't really move without ripping my clothes. So I found that really interesting. <laughs> that was week two. So I found that really interesting to be wearing clothes that were actually from the period and how, you know, I felt so, I don't know, like tight and uptight and rigid. Like I couldn't, I couldn't move. But then when I wore like modern pieces that were made to look period, I had a lot more freedom in what I was wearing and I could move around and... I think there's a lot of social commentary to, yeah. to, about that as well. Yes, yes, I think so. And I, I think we, we wanted to... Mercedes was very clear in that she didn't want Catherine wearing a skirt mm -hmm. for the whole thing because she hates how there's all these action movies and then the female lead looks like she's just stepped off the run. I mean, they did a great job. Everyone in the looks team made me look very nice, but um, we didn't want that. We didn't want to wear a skirt. So put on the pants. I had the belt for practicality and She's all about being practical, so. You weren't running through the dunes in high heels. No, and <laughs> a skirt, yeah. She, she made sure, Catherine made sure she put her pants on before she went through the Stargate because she wasn't sure what she was getting into. <laughs> always got to wear your pants before you go through always, the Stargate. Yeah. Always, always got to wear your pants before you go through a Stargate, <laughs> yeah. Um, Siobhan, I, you know, one thing that struck me is as we get towards the end of the series um, is... Uh, that connective moment that Wasif has. Yeah. And so we now have uh, an, an openly LGBTQ character in yes. Stargate for, I believe, the first time, for all my knowledge of the... Second. The second? Yeah, we had Camille Ray in oh, uh, God, SGA. Right. But... Yes, in universe. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's it's a great step, and it's, uh, uh, you know, you did a beautiful job with it. I wanted to kind of go into that and kind of get your, your thoughts surrounding that. I think when I read the script... Uh, I didn't know Wasif was gay until I read the script. Well, no, that's a lie. I knew on the callback. <laughs> no, <laughs> you had to... <laughs> no, wait. For the first audition, I didn't know he was gay. Uh, but I, I, that's when I knew I loved him. But then, like, for the callback for Wasif, it did say, like, has to be okay with kissing another guy. And I understood, obviously, he's gay. And uh, I loved it even more because I think portraying Middle Eastern characters it's very often stereotypical and it gets really really tiring you know you want to you want to do like every every other actor you know mm -hmm. white black middle eastern asian whatever you want to be able to like portray different characters and uh, wasif is amazing in that sense because this is not a terrorist for the first time <laughs> <laughs> and he's a human being you know he's a yeah. loyal friend he's gay he's egyptian and it feels it feels really honorary to be portraying a Middle Eastern character that's gay in a show like this. And it fantastic. really is. I his, love it. His story is kind of is interesting as well because kind of when he got to Abydos, he kind of felt free. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes Shame what happened at the end, but he did feel free for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, exactly. He, he, I think that the kind of happiness he got with Moltak was probably better than what he would have gotten the rest of his life in Egypt mm -hmm. in that time, you know? Mm -hmm. He would have probably not found someone. And, like, he had his moment. And it's so beautiful. It really is. So, I mean, it makes Wasif even more special because of that. Because he was gay. Yeah, and we've heard that from a lot of fans who are just overjoyed to see that kind of representation yeah. on well, screen. And Stargate's been representing from the very beginning with strong female characters and inclusion, yeah. and so it's it's just another, it's one of the many reasons a lot of people loved the Stargate universe yeah. Yeah. Um, for that. Uh, and, and I think it was magnificent that that's brought into Origins as well. Yeah. Um, I was curious when when you guys are, because we, as, as an audience, we, we get this window of, of view of, of these characters' lives. What did you guys uh, kind of on your own build as as how your character got to that point? Or maybe even did you theorize where your character may have gone after that? Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's left open. It, yeah. it, there's sarc sarcophagus. It can yeah, always be brought back. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, I think I think for any character you want to you want to leave room for discovery, um, but give and I, I think that's the the, the beauty of, of our story in particular is that we, we come, you set up kind of two worlds. You have the sort of 
normal 1939 world that we inhabit, and then they cross over to something very different. So I think a lot of my work was just making sure that I was ready for those discoveries, if that makes sense. And that involved, you know, maybe not watching too much Stargate. <laughs> you know, being being able to because I think a lot of the sense of wonder is something that that permeates the entire franchise, right? And that's and it's the I think we talked about this as well, like the unknown. Yeah. That's and that's the beauty of science fiction is that anything can happen. You know, you can you can be someone else. So and, that was and that's kind of through Stargate as well. Pretty much everything, um, the central theme in all Stargate shows is you're learning along with the main characters. Mm -hmm. So in the movie, you're learning with Daniel Jackson as he goes through. Yeah. SG-1, you're kind of finding humanity's place in the galaxy. SGA, you're finding humanity's place in another galaxy. Mm -hmm. And then like SGU, again, they're trying to they're learning about this ship. And then with Origins, mm -hmm. it's even more apparent because they paid so much attention to the language barriers mm -hmm. and trying to break that down as well. Yeah. So I think it was really nice to continue that theme. And speaking about languages, was it kind of cool to see like the ancient Egyptian yeah. language coming to life and what Stuart did with with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys didn't it, have to. I mean, no. you had to like, wrestle with a little bit of it. I didn't yeah. have to wrestle with it at all, so <laughs> I don't really, I'm not really qualified to speak uh, in Egyptian or English about this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, was, it was, it, was it challenging for you? Yes. It was very challenging for me. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, just I don't have much experience with other lang learning languages so to get my head around that way of learning was difficult but as Catherine it's something that she's very familiar with and it did make sense that she would pick up on it so quickly given her you expertise know, yeah yeah once she can figure out the rhythm and you know the rules and that's kind of how she operates yeah so she just dives into things if she understands a little bit like yeah she she gets it enough that she'll just do it. And ignores what's Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does, yes. She likes to figure things out before other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to talk briefly and in depth about shooting in the desert. <laughs> We're actually briefly cutting together a, a reel about shooting in the desert right now, and I was just saying to these guys that I felt exhausted just watching the footage from that shoot. Yeah. Well, I want, first I want to ask, there's that kind of like weird shiny metal face thing. Oh, what who had that? that? What was that? Was, to, uh, was, was that to keep the, the heat off of your face? Tony. No, that Tony. was Tony. 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 Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Um, Tony, yeah. Uh, from the art department. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. He he just had it to shield um, the sand and dust from his face, but he looked really creepy and scary. Yeah, it looks really sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. It reminded me of the black, was it the black hole? Black hole? 1979? Uh, anyway, there's a there's a movie, and they have those similar, very similar um, faces, and that really, that's what I thought. It was yeah. quite scary. Yeah. But what, is, what was it like shooting in the desert? It sounded, sounded like it was exhausting. Yeah. Tiring. Hard. Fun yeah. and rewarding. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we it saw this. Yeah. It yeah. was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> remember the it shots? was like... Sorry, you can't. I'm sorry. I don't no, know. You, we, you, we're all like, uh, remember uh, the, <laughs> the heat and the sand? Uh, yeah. It was, uh, what's crazy, seeing the final shots and how big that desert is mm -hmm. and how, how insignificant like we are as, as characters. That one shot where you guys are like yeah. walking across Just, the dunes. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Little tiny specks. Oh, tiny specks yeah. That was, each other and that was great fun. They're like, okay, so you're running up to Kusuf now and then you're going to stop here and then keep running. Yeah. And, were you able yeah. to draw on some of that hardship, the physical hardship of shooting in the desert for, uh, you know, giving those performances of characters that are up against these odds? Uh, yes. Also, though, in the studio, it was really hot. Oh, my God. It, <laughs> it was, was so hot. That, yeah. When was it? Episode 5? Was it episode 5 where we're in the tent? Yeah, episode 5. That was yeah, the yeah, first yeah. day yeah. and you'd been stabbed. Yeah. And I remember, like, when I watched that, the final cut of that I'm like wow we yeah. look hot and sweaty yeah. so no and it was like 100, 100 degrees in Burbank I think it was like... well it was 100 degrees in Burbank in the studio it was probably like 110 and then it was something else inside yeah, the tents, tents or something else. with yeah. all those humans and equipment and lights and camera it was yeah it was hot but it's a it's a gift as well yeah when you're given you know when you're dropped in the middle of a desert you don't have to pretend at least that, that aspect of it yeah, um you don't have to imagine that you're hot no we it's all, just all there <laughs> the room was hot yeah and it's a great performance you know it's a great thing to, to perform on you know to be in that setting like you can't 
I mean, there's a reason we took you know the time to go out and do that is because it, it's a, it's a tremendously beautiful addition to especially like an exterior shot in the series. You know, you get that sense of it really opening up when we hit yeah. that yeah. that segment, that sort of segue in in episode you know four and five. Yeah, because well, a lot of the moments are quite close and personal. And right. so then when you get those shots where it just gets blown out into the into the desert and then across the rocks. Like I love that scene with you oh. talking to Kasuf about sorry, Kasuf yeah. about the <laughs> about the about his gods and yeah. like as you're walking across the the yeah. Nakoda. Yeah, that was a really beautiful scene. I hadn't seen that yeah. until I saw until he came out. I was like, "That's beautiful." It's very dude. profound. It was <laughs> really, it was really cool. We had because we had no idea. Yeah, yeah. I had no yeah. idea. But you guys both played that one excellent. It was, it was so good. Yeah, it was really good. Is it, that actually uh, brings up an interesting question? Do you guys have uh, either a favorite or revealing moment for somebody else's character, or a favorite line that somebody oh, else had? Oh, yeah. I you got one. <laughs> I I love I love uh, when is it episode seven the dinner party? But this wasn't a dinner party. <laughs> We've been calling it Abedonian feast. Yeah. But yeah. We can call the, it dinner party. The Abedonian <laughs> dinner party. Uh, I I love all the other exchanges between all the characters because the way that we shot that it was just me and Philip just talking, and then there was a lot of like camera here talking mm. into the camera like the. What was it? The love. What did what did Mercedes call it? The love montage. Sure, the love. The love. Uh, the love look or something. Yeah, the the lens or or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, when we like gaze into each other's Barney eyes. Way. Barney way. Barney way. <laughs> <laughs> and then did Daniel? Did he? Say, he said like, oh, can I say Barney way like as well? I or was that, was, that always in the that. script? No, he he. I, I think he. He's completely that, improvised because yeah. he's a genius. Yeah, um, and he he was like Barney way. And he was just like sitting up to the side <laughs> of the camera doing there. that, just just for <laughs> the line reading. But it, it really wasn't oh, helping at all. <laughs> uh, what was that shot that she called? There was a word for the shot. Come to us. The love close up or something. Something like that. It had a better ring to it, but that's kind of. The, Can you tweet that out when you figure it out? <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. think about it for a while. And I really, lo when I saw, because I didn't see any of you and um, you and Tona's stuff, um, like at the table, because we was I was never in that shot, so I got to, you know, wasn't there. Um, I I loved the whole, you know, like oh bless you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I loved. I just Sweet. I just loved that, and I loved all the like. Um, lost in translation kind of moments yeah. between you guys. I thought that was. That was so funny, and then I we're just sitting over there being like, oh, we got to save the world. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are just dreamy. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. What world? Sorry. Yeah. What world? I, I, no I really liked that. That was that yeah. was cool to see that episode all finished up. Yeah. Any other favorite lines? I love like sir, uh, Asset, like when she's like, "You were foolish to come." I don't know why every time yeah. she says, "Yeah," was her mm. first line when she says that. I took it back several times. I was like, "That's." <laughs> That's cool. And then when Ross comes fierce. and say, "I'm here for you," yeah. As, I don't know why, but those voices. I mean, I was not a Stargate fan. I I think I'm starting right now because those voices are giving me a thrill. I'm like, oh, yeah. exciting! Why do they sound like that and stuff? That was <laughs> why. Why? <did> no, <laughs> <that was, laughs> why do they sound like that? No, yeah, the, the fans, it's, the it's fans will tell you. Yeah. It's a great question. And lore now is, is what became of Wasif, right? Is 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 a great thing to chat about now. Yeah. And in in Stargate lore, where what what's his place? Stargate um, lore after Origins. So yeah, that's kind of a fun one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the fact that a lot of it's kind of left. A little bit there's you can interpret different things slightly mm -hmm. differently yeah. absolutely so i still think bill's alive somewhere <laughs> he's alive in uh he's Hearts not even alive in my memory <laughs> <laughs> no i'm completely erased Ra could yeah. have wanted intel on the tauri we don't know yeah yep. like could just pop him in the sarco sarcophagus and bring him back as yep. much as he wants is that a practical sort of like could, could that it's, you know feasibly yeah. have? okay yeah, yeah. Can you un uh, damage and uh, like you know the way undamage? <laughs> yeah, no, undamage. Um, like you know, now obviously Wasif and Motok don't even remember. It would remember take it. a very benevolent Gua mm -hmm. or Tokra that can use the hand device, but it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying there's a, <laughs> there's a chance. Right. Right. There is a chance. Yeah. Um, I thought the I thought that the uh, the design on Asset was really cool. Yeah. Like yeah. The, yes. how was that to to interact to walk in and and. She's in that incredible costume, those contacts, all that stuff. Um, I felt for them 
as another woman on set. <laughs> Uh, they, yeah, they were in that chair for a very long time. They were wearing very little. Um, they had a lot of stuff on their face and in their hair. Like, that was all wigs. Um, and, you know, they were so gracious about it and just, you know, did what they needed to do. Um, and the whole team making them look like that were incredible as well and working so hard. And, you know, Stacey did hair all on her own. She did every single person's hair on the show. There was never, there was never anyone else that came on, mm. no, she was, and helped her with that. It was, it was it pretty incredible to see each yeah. department produce what you know what what is on screen and and the the, the tremendous detail, um, especially like with Alset's costume. She has this kind of combination of metal, gold, yeah. all these different uh, surfaces and 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 materials and elements that are working um, together and then and then when you see it and it's one thing because they were striking in person and then to see it on on, on screen, screen as well it's just and, yeah, yeah. yeah it, you really feel a, a bit of ancient Egypt yeah. come to life and and in and with the language as well which I thought the combination of which was all quite magical and then when they would add that voice that kind of deep, yeah, uh, like yeah. Right. Mm. voice it, it was you scary. know I did not expect that when I saw the yeah, episode I, didn't I, did that. That. I was like what happened like, no. Whoa. No, no, no. that's so what's like so, 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 so cool for the people that that didn't grow up around Hollywood let's let's pull that back <laughs> what what when you guys were filming that was mm -hmm. it just a regularly delivered line was yeah. she doing yeah. something with a deep you know no no, no it was just you know like this <laughs> like no no, no. Like, I mean obviously no but like yeah, it was yeah, not yeah. I would never yeah, think just, that voice annoying. would be and it on. works it really because it, it the good thing about it is that it doesn't alter any of her performance it really enhanced it, it because it. she does have that yeah. that sort of panache and that that flair to that she brought to outset that yeah. is completely amplified by that yeah it's really cool to watch that yeah she really commanded that space she did yeah. they, yes. both, they both did actually and yeah you know what yeah. was, it was so funny michelle who plays circuit mm -hmm. is the sweetest person i have <laughs> ever met and then i was chatting to her yes. i think i actually i uh interviewed her before i got to see her in action mm. i was like blown away she's mm -hmm. like they're like kicking butt and yeah yeah it was it was crazy mm -hmm. but um you were saying about how um salam and everyone was like really kind of gracious and they were just like totally relaxed mm -hmm. that kind of could be said of everybody everyone i've never yeah. i've never been on a set where everyone is just so relaxed at like mm -hmm. three in the morning after like <laughs> a 14 hour day people are just sat on the couches goofing around what was it like did it feel like a, a special group to you guys yeah it did it felt like everyone was doing it for the right reasons um and really invested in the material and the work and what they were making um because it was tough it was it was hard challenging a lot of long hot days a, a yeah. lot of long hot days yeah and um it was like an it was very exceptional ensemble right and that's and that's the beauty of us getting to be able to see it as well is because we we follow our own storylines as our characters but then we like we get to see the other storylines play out and we get to interact with these other actors and then see their work on screen is really neat because we're simply not there we're not present when these things are being yeah. filmed so but it was a very wonderful like kind of communal family atmosphere to it mm -hmm. um that i think translates as well were there any scenes uh not involving your character where you were like i have to go watch this or you, you wanted to see oh. it develop um because there's a lot well, of great scenes throughout that are just two people here and two people there, and it's mm -hmm. different. Mm. I mean, we were there all the time. We were there, like, so <laughs> we were there a lot. If, yeah. Most of the time, honestly, if I wasn't, I if I was watching like well, the fight, some of the fight scene stuff, I went in and like watched that with my stunt double. Um, but if I wasn't on set, I was probably in the makeup chair or it, yeah. getting my hair fixed or getting my costume on. Um, or, yeah, sometimes they'd make us come in and watch the rehearsal and then we'd all go and mm -hmm. um, do our thing. But it was a lot of, okay, get ready, quickly, go. And, yeah. I think well, 
we had like I remember the Nazis they shot after uh, like you know I remember we had shot a lot of things and then they had in the warehouse that's like the only time when they were as a group mm -hmm. the Nazis and I was like I need to see this I yeah. need to know what they're about this other this other group. yeah because you guys they were kind of like two for a long time they were kind of yeah. like two different <laughs> yeah. groups yeah. there were yeah. you guys and the yeah. Adonians and then there was like the Nazis uh, kind of like Professor Langford and the Nazis and our set yeah. Um, and then you kind of come together at the end. We still never really crossed over with them that much in terms of, like, shooting together. Mm. Like, we never really right. got to... I mean, because that big fight... What, what is it? Episode 8? Yes. Where the fight is going on. Mm. That whole thing, they... Yeah, because you, you guys are watching it. We're you're, watching you're it. You're there, right? You're... Oh, yeah, you were there. In the, for the, the end audience, fight? like, when... Oh, you're in the audience. Oh, yeah, that was us and Daniel. Daniel. Sorry, uh, where's... Um, with... Well, was Stephon Lincoln. and when yes, yeah, I, was was in the the yes, yes yeah, yeah. I was in the audience, and that was a very sweaty scene. Like Stephon, <laughs> he was dripping. Yeah. Like I got yeah. sweaty by just looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> I and mean, then at times when I when we weren't watching the scenes, I would just wander around the set because people were building things. The cool yeah. thing about all the construction that was going on, and I'd like see a project, and they're like, "Oh, we're just making this, you know, beautiful tent for another scene." And I would just kind of like, "Can I watch you for like just because this is <laughs> Sit cross this legged is, <laughs> Yeah, it was just incredible. See they, Philip standing in the corner. <laughs> yeah, just what do you guys? You guys need any help? Like, no, doing? no, we're fine. I'm like, okay, well, thanks. But it was there was so many great pockets of activity, and. You know, yeah. the whole process. So you guys are kind of lucky because you don't have to, you know, spend an hour and a half, two hours getting your hair That's true. hot rolled. And no, no, I didn't. Yeah. Lucky you. <laughs> Many sets have a prankster. Who was yours? It's probably the right answer. It was Justin. 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 Right? <laughs> Justin he's, writer, just, yeah. he's funny. He's yeah, said funny things is. a lot. Yeah, he is. Funny. Yeah. You never he's stop. Funny. I've never known someone to, to just exist almost entirely in jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. It's an incredible like ability. You're like, oh, hey, Justin, how's it going? And you get some like like fantastic one liner. Fantastic like, one liner. And you're like, well, you okay, over thanks. And after. <laughs> yeah. And he yeah. also did this weird like thing like every now and then like in, if it was like really late nights. I don't know if you guys were ever exposed to it. It was like Justin and I think Tana mm -hmm. and a couple of the other crew would be like. Right, press ups, and everyone would just like have press up oh, contests in the middle yeah, of the night just to kind of like keep what? themselves going. No, didn't see that. Maybe I, I was never a part of that. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was like sometimes they brought on a, a a coffee truck or like a coffee making person. Oh, they call them coffee. coffee <laughs> making. I've never Barista. seen people so excited for coffee, coffee yeah. like yeah. two o'clock in the morning. The coffee trucks. Yeah, like coffee. People like running. Coffee's here. Coffee's here. Yeah. Yeah. No, great. Justin's definitely, mm. definitely the, the, the prankster, I think. Yeah. And, and Tonner as well. He he always brought the energy. Yeah, yeah. incredible energy mm -hmm. and humor. Because that's what keeps you going. Yeah. Mm. And something like that. Mm -hmm. So, very well, very welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody have any um, interesting stories about uh, interacting with either the set or some of the prop pieces and things? Some of those, you oh, know. Cool, cool. No? It's about you. What, with, about me? With the guns. My favorite moment of the entire shoot what? was when you oh, were doing with the, the... Yeah, you say it. Go and say it. Spent ages kind of <laughs> like... Because they were using... They weren't using blanks, so there was actually like a, a kickback. Yeah, yeah. Like, quarter, um, quarter, like, quarter, wasn't sort of, they weren't like fake little pop guns. Yeah, are you, so when I said bang... Yeah. Is that what it is? So okay. it's like practice, 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 and you know, going yeah, through yeah. rehearsals. No, and Ellie was saying bang. Because bang. they were making. So I would come out, and I'd come out with the gun, and I'd point it, and then they'll. Mercedes, like, you need to let them know that you're in the rehearsal, that you're shooting the gun, so they know when to turn around. So she's like, say, say bang. So I was like, bang. And, uh, well, yeah, I came out, and I, the gun was loaded, and we we're all ready, and I said, bang, and I shot it. <laughs> There. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, apparently, it's something in Star Wars too. Like a lot of the actors, like, would because when they're practicing, they're mm -hmm. like, shush, shush, like. You and McGregor doing... had to get told to stop. I think going you told me this story. Yeah, yeah. I think you told me this story. But it, it's like and, a and Laura Dern did pew pew. pew pew. Yeah. Because yeah, you get these kind of you get a, into a habit pretty quickly doing it, and then you you do it. <laughs> Firing an MP40 was cool. A real MP40 from from the actual period so yeah. that was that was a pretty uh powerful like just scene to to be able to do that um and it comes across cool. great as well because it's like Beale's last stand Beale's last stand yeah <laughs> valiant such a good scene um no it was great and just i think a lot of i think that the the 
the party, the dinner scene. All the food that was prepared for that. Oh, yeah, that was really good. <laughs> yeah. What actually was it? Uh, it was like, well, it was all vegan. She's like, it's vegan, so everyone can eat it. There was like lentils and beans. And what else was there? It was Honestly, actually a lot of lentils, I think. Yeah, a lot of lentils. Yeah. I mean, kind of what else would they have in the Abedonian desert? We don't know. know. Oh, <laughs> there was a pretty nice array of food, yeah, considering yeah, the, they, the circumstances. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, they had water, some lotus, lotus fruit. Lotus yeah. root. Do you remember that? Yes, and I do. it's like it, it's it like a big, flower right? root vegetable and they cooked it in something and it was like crunchy and tasty. It was good. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. Eating all day. And I, I know for it. you it was the bucket, right? It was the bucket. I yeah, 100%. <laughs> Did Just you take that bucket like from set you have that as a souvenir? It, it's actually in my house, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the origins. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't it? get a cool prop like that. that? Where's the bucket? bucket? No, but I, I would want that bucket right now if I could <laughs> hang that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, need, we need to find that bucket. It'd be like a cool bucket to put like plants in or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's LA. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like a metaphor for career, right? Yeah. You plant a little something in there and it grows. Yeah. And grows yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 I like yeah. that. That's very nice. philosophical. I'm good for one every month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted to keep the costume, the soldier costume I was with. Oh, cool. Red fez. Obviously, that did not happen. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were wearing it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you would never take it off. <laughs> every day you would see me in it. The, the, the amulet, maybe the, the eyebrow? Yes, I, yep. I did get a, my own little personal one, which I was, forgot to wear today. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I do. That's, I, that was really cool getting to use that. It had a bit of weight to it. Um, we only had the one like real nice one. So um, we had like a fake one, a prop one, a stunt one. Mm -hmm. That was a fake one. Uh, and yeah, wearing that was really cool, but it also was scary for everyone because it's like, oh, well, if this breaks, then that's it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to write some reason that it breaks. Yeah, yeah which just won't work. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was a really cool prop. Um, I, yeah, but I liked all my, like, I like journal. I like paper. So I loved my journal. I think they did a really amazing job at all the little drawings in there that's what i, I really want to like track down mm, I want that journal. it was a journal mm. it's got what i've written i wrote in there in the back like in that in that's that scene we created for fans that'd be fun yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that scene um when i find the final symbol like i actually i wrote i drew them all in there in the end so it's a little drawing oh, that nice. i did in there i spent a lot of time looking through that in between takes just enjoying the art to yeah. me <laughs> one of the one of my favorite kind of connective pieces to uh to the Stargate series, it's the necklace, but it's also mm. the scene where you break the tablet in the cave. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was a great, uh, great nod to, and you know, we, it was a, you know, great pull from before to the mm. film. Um, like, oh, that's, that's it's a real like there. eureka mm -hmm. moment, isn't right? It? Like, yeah. Oh, I get it. Eureka. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It was that was uh, I actually broke the torch. Um, that we were that one that we we're filming with uh, Mercedes Christ is like you so you just you're gonna smash it with the torch and within like the first take it the torch was done <laughs> <laughs> it was dead it's, torches are not made to torch. yes to <laughs> smash <laughs> things with um, yeah to break stones yep that's it that 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 scene was pretty cool as well because of because of the fire mm -hmm. but um I think a lot of the scenes that you guys were working with the green screen and all of that you didn't get to see it come to life until the show was actually released. Yeah. So what's yeah. it been like? So you kind of went through that journey and then it's been a few months of post-production and then you got to see it. Did it kind of meet your expectations on how it all came out? Was there anything that really kind of surprised you? Uh, I, I think it was, it was, I think we had the, 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 a good level of, of like wonder and, um, you know, it was because we, Again, we didn't want to look too much into the other series mm -hmm. and kind of have an idea exactly of what we were seeing and and the scale of it and how it looked and how it might appear. But I think we, as like an ensemble and as a, just our trio as well, kind of had a really good sense of what we were experiencing together. Mm -hmm. And I think that really came through. And I was really, really pleased with that. And the special effects really serve, serve the story in that way. Yeah. So that was neat to see. It's neat to see what you were seeing. 
Yeah. You yeah. see what yeah. the characters yeah. were yeah. seeing, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. that's what they yeah. were. So that's a, that in itself is a, is a is a beautiful thing to see just as as an actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, sorry, you go. No, 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 no. No, you go. You, you, go. you go. It was a lot of green <laughs> screen, and I'm not you. Uh, other pro, uh, pro productions I've done has not been that many green screens, so it was very much, you know, like he says, like finally see what you your character <laughs> sees, yeah. like you know, you see the coach, and you see like. Even the, you know, uh, when we were in Abydos, where we land and the three moons yeah, behind us. I mean, that, that was green cool. screen, you know, we yeah. don't see, we that just see cool. a big light in our face. And yeah. the green screen yeah. behind yeah. us. So wow. it's so interesting to finally be like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. this is what we're looking at. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. I think the fact that we also were doing a show where, I mean, Stargate, that people have already gone through it. And mm. there's already, we kind of knew what that was going to look like and... What did you imagine like, it felt like going uh, like, through that, like, like water, jello? What are we talking? Did we, we, what, we what, what did this. you imagine when you go through this? I kind of, for me, I almost felt like a, a roller coaster where you felt like sucked, like a vacuum cleaner or something. Like you went yeah. through a vacuum cleaner. Terror. <laughs> what <are you> <laughs> abject, <laughs> abject terror. Paul Beale just felt terror yeah. all Beale. the time. What do you, yeah. what do you guys call a vacuum cleaner? I didn't call it an American thing, did I? Maybe not. Hoover. A Hoover. Hoover. Yeah. Vacuum cleaner. I felt like a roller coaster, yeah. like going to Six Flags, and you know I don't, I don't like, um, I've never liked roller coasters, so so I just imagine you that. Feeling. You don't like roller coasters? No, no, and and okay. so I just reminded, I, I kind of used that um, to imagine going through a sort of interstellar roller coaster. Um, Tap into that childhood terror. Yeah, that <laughs> use it, um, but it it was, but I think there's something about it. Again, seeing that the actual process of going through that thing, that animation was beautiful as well. Yeah. Mm. So it can't be all terror. There's, there's, there's a lot of. I don't know what it feels like though. It's just <laughs> being pulled yeah. apart, spaghettified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It it sounded like there was a lot of uh, just in hearing these stories, a lot of great chemistry. Talk about maybe uh, the cast and crew, you know, behind and uh, in front of camera, and how how that all worked out. Yeah. Um, I feel like the first. Even the first days with, say, we, we, okay, so first of all, the crew. Like, we had the second AD, Ted Keffer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so... It's good when one name just brings life. <laughs> yeah. No, well, he had it, so he had a nick, because I came on, I Sounds was like the last. Sounds like have drinks with Ted, and you haven't even talked you about it. Oh, you definitely do. you want to have yeah. drinks with yeah. Ted. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Yeah. You should yeah. all have drinks with Ted. Everyone have drinks with Ted. Um... I came on late, and some who was it that came up to me? And someone goes, "Okay, Ellie. Uh, so, this is Daddy oh, T. No. You have to call him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to call him Daddy T." I'm like, oh, wow. I, I did who? not call him. Daddy oh, well, why? Why, why <laughs> did they? And why did they call him Dad? They called him Daddy T because it was like. He was the second AD, no? No, the, there was a reason that. It was like I mean, initially the Papa, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, they called him like Papa T or something, and Tony was like, "I'm going to call him Daddy T." <laughs> Not like that. It didn't really fit him, but it, it was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah and but he I, hated it. Yeah, I think also that the cast, yeah, because it was a, we all had to work together really quickly. There wasn't any any time to sort of, um, you know, develop, uh, you know, these working relationships. It, it, they were there from the start, because it was the challenges began at day one, and so it was really, I mean, it was a there was almost no division really between yeah. cast and crew. Yeah. It was yeah. everyone yeah. just doing yeah. this thing yeah. together. Everyone has their piece because it required an immense coordination and, and skill. And so we were absolutely served by by people on in every aspect of it. Yeah. And yeah. that and was, it was I felt really safe. Shooting in schedule which probably accelerated. Yeah. Really <laughs> it was. Yeah, really you're going to get to know everyone pretty quickly that yeah. way. Yeah. But it was nice though, like just kind of whenever it was like lunch break or mm -hmm. breakfast break, whatever they called it, just everyone just at the tables, hanging out, mm -hmm. chatting. Um, there were just there were no like zero attitude or like yeah no 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 per, like big personalities that kind of no divas. Mm -hmm. No, I think Mercedes really made. She has has a really positive energy about her, and I think that she really sure. did create a space where that was allowed. Do you you could be you could have fun and you were serious when you needed to be, but she didn't ever make you feel like. Um, you didn't have an opinion or that you weren't valued and yeah she really brought a great energy to the whole set i think everyone kind of took from that yeah and there's and some levity to it 
you know that there is a there was a great sense of levity to the just in not towards the work but a feeling of of like mutual joy about what we were doing and, and checking in every once in a while someone said oh this isn't working They're like that's okay it's stargate like this is we'll incredible mm. this is amazing we can we're a part of this great thing and that was that also was a great yeah there was always know. just this like incredible energy i mean you were you were especially kind of the, one of the drivers of that energy because you know there were setbacks here and there and you'd be like oh okay well never mind let's just keep going yeah <laughs> so and it was just there was never i mean i remember i was speaking to connor trenier and he actually said he was like there are times i've just been waiting for someone to snap <laughs> <laughs> i was certain someone was just gonna snap but it never happened uh. um and i think that's really impressive yeah, yeah i think yeah. it's one of those things like once it already started like you just had, but like the thing is, you can snap. But at the same time, we did it. It was. It's not like we have a year to do this. Like you know, we had our time frame, and it was like yeah. just go through it, just get mm -hmm. through it. Like I think it was like that for all of us, basically. Yeah. Like yeah. even if it was moments when you were like, "What is happening?" But you know, it's so intense and it's so short, and you know what you're doing, and everybody wanted this to be good. So mm -hmm. you don't want to yeah. be the one that snaps. Yeah. Yeah, and. We were all in the same position. Yeah. Every every single person working on the show was working as hard as they could yeah. to to do something. And if one person didn't, then yeah, you'd pull everyone else back. So mm -hmm. yeah, there was a lot of respect for each other on the on the set. Other than Kieran, was there anybody else on the set that was a super Stargate fan? Oh, Matt, <laughs> Matt Miller? Miller was like the, Miller, the, the producer. Matt producer Matt Miller was okay. um, and he did. Um, incredible work mm -hmm. getting uh props and like you know, you know tracking down uh stewart the language professor from mm -hmm. the original movie <laughs> he is it was a lot of his work that made it feel like a genuine stargate show and he's kind, kind of the of, continuity he, with yeah he'd always yeah. like you'd, he'd always have a coffee cup with him and on his coffee cup he'd draw like the chevrons <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was a yeah. fan yeah he's yeah. yeah. a super fan but he's a fan. he had and he would like sometimes we'd be you know standing, watching you know maybe somebody being set up. Is that your Matt Miller impersonation? <laughs> <laughs> it's my, it's my Matt Miller. Just you intense. got a little bit more serious, yeah. just like. <laughs> um, and he, I'd maybe stand next to him, or he'd stand next to me, and he would just drop this piece of Stargate wisdom on me. He'd be like, you know, because in the, in that this episode of this one, this is what we did, and that was how it. And I just go. <laughs> and then he'd just walk away. <laughs> like, he's just a sage, or he'd, you know, he'd just tell me all these. So I know as much from the show as I do from him, you know, being able to. And, and his his passion, like, infused. It was it was so vital that he was the the guy sort of mm. behind the the engine of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah. He said a lot. He's like, oh, my my teenage self would be <laughs> like, loving their life. Like this was yeah. his dream. Yeah. As a kid. This movie was there once once you guys all found out that the project was stargate was there kind of a gravitas of entering a you know a universe that was so established and you know that had a large fandom that's still yeah. that's still <laughs> shell yeah. yeah bill looks shook over there I'm about it. <laughs> yeah. uh it was i mean it's intimidating but you c intimidating because i th because of the simply the, the size of the the canon and all the work and all that all the actors that have gone through various seasons, not just on the main roles, but in guest arcs. Mm -hmm. And 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 I'm seeing that on Twitter as well, like all these people talking about their favorite characters from one episode or one mm -hmm. season. And it's just, it's kind of a staggering to, to think about our contribution to that. But yeah. it's an honor, it's not, yeah. you know, yeah. scary. Now you guys talked a lot about kind of, uh, once you found out avoiding for, for the sake of the art, have you since had a chance to go back um, and and like, I don't know. In 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 your case, you were Catherine Langford's first love, uh, mm -hmm. and been able to go back and and rewatch any of the Ernest storyline, yeah. or, or something like that. Well, I'm a bit jealous of Ernest, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I think it's, you know, I I think what I'm gonna do is I, I watched the film again because I wanted to see mm. the the sort of correlations between those those two stories, particularly with your. And Wontok's unfortunate, uh, mm -hmm. and, um, but it's really, I kind of don't know where to start. You know, there's so much, I saw this really cool thing on Twitter of like, someone gave like this the thing of like, order. the viewing order, so I think I'm gonna definitely do that. 
Yeah. Dive so in. we now have yeah. a, we have a Stargate hatchet viewing order now. The way. Yeah, I think there's different ways. Is that, that official? Could, there's it's different not ways official. that you could do it. I mean, <laughs> you know, because Origins in many ways has lots of nods to the rest of the franchise. So if you're fresh, if you're new to it, it might not actually be the best place to start, even though right. chronologically it is. Um, but if you were doing it chronologically, I think it actually would flow really well just going from Origins it seems like it would read to the really, movie yeah. to SG1. Yeah. Like that, mm. from Origins to the movie to Children of the Gods. I think is an awesome binge watch. That's the challenge to you guys out there. <laughs> all right, and I'm going to do this with you guys. All right, so what we have to do is we have to watch Origins start to finish. We're actually about to get the uh, complete series uh, download available on the All Access on Stargate yes. Command. Um, so it's going to be in uh, 4K, really, really beautiful. Um, so that's coming up. Um, but do that, then go into the film, then go into uh, the two-parter Children of the Gods, um, and and. Let's see how that flows, and let's get your feedback when we uh, show up here next week and do our next uh, live broadcast. That'd be fun. Yeah, for um, sure. But cool. So, and then uh, have have you had a chance to maybe watch some of the um, Catherine episodes? You know, I haven't yet because, I mean, I've been watching the show as it comes out, and I don't know. I just feel like it's this little world that we created, and I almost don't want to know about <laughs> all the other stuff that happened after me because it's just this experience feels so personal um and i have so much memory attached to watching it but I, it, yeah it would be a fun little fun thing to do go back and watch we should do another cast and crew screening where yeah we like, we like do just a How week let's hire a house <laughs> yeah watch the everything Stargate origins <laughs> retreat yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah a lot of hours a lot of hours it'd be yeah. like a good half day oh it's really Oh, really? Well, well not, not for the whole thing, but oh, what we no, just no. described. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a half day? Oh, that's a half day. No, but I mean, like, to watch gonna, every like, single thing. Oh, no, yeah, five hours. Years. <laughs> years, yeah. Yeah, it's years. a lifetime's work. Um, oh, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to go and watch it yet. But, um, yeah, now the show's over. It is, it's, the, it's weird, because something that we made is, it's done, and I do kind of feel like I, I miss it a bit, and... There is so much for me to now and go see, so that's really cool. You don't always get that with other jobs that you do. It's kind of like they're dead and they're gone, and you don't really yeah. ever think about them again unless it pops up. But yeah, there was a lot of sadness at the rap party, I think. Yeah. A lot of people were just like, oh, so that, that, that's it? That's <laughs> it, huh? Okay. Well, <laughs> no, it, it's it, there's a bit of melancholy, but yeah. I think it's it's a, it's a nice to situate yourself within that universe. Because it's so massive. So, like, for us, that was, you know, the, uh, the biggest experience we had with it. But then it's like, no, there's, yeah, there's a lot. A lot. I, I would like to watch. Uh, I heard so much good about SG-1. And honestly, like, I, I was never much for sci-fi. I always thought it was the most boring genre on this planet. <laughs> I did. But now, not anymore. I not guess. anymore. See, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. I am actually getting interested in it. And it's like... I think I want to give SG-1 a huge chance. I think I just want to sit, because once I choose a show, I watch mm. it through until I'm that's done with that. Ten that's the thing. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm almost a little bit and that's scared just to SG1. start. Right? This is, it's like Game it's of Thrones. If I get into that, my life is gone. Yeah, yeah. It's gone, because i got to catch up. Well, Stargate, you're talking about over 300 hours. Yeah. But if you, Terrifying. like, start with SG-1 and maybe, mm -hmm. like, at least, like, do some mental contract that I'm going to see the first season, and then if you want to just, you know, I don't know. I think that's I think what once you do. watch it, honestly, yeah, you'll, you're going to get hooked. hooked. Yeah, yeah, that's why I have Wake a Wake up feeling. four days later. <laughs> you got I've watched 72 episodes. What happened to me? I have a feeling I will be this, this <laughs> sci-fi junkie after this and, like, give yeah. me yeah. more. Give okay. Me more. I got a whole list for you. You're taking care of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank We're good at Send it to me. Send it to me. That melancholy, though, I can tell you guys for sure that when you enter you know when you enter a universe like this with a fandom like this this is going to be with you guys forever like you're you're always going to have uh great fandom interactions that'll happen because you were part of the stargate family now yeah so i think that's, that's i think that's nice. a really cool thing and um, stargate fans are incredible they are just i mean I'm not saying that just because I am one. <laughs> but, <laughs> your t-shirt. I'm so. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They they are so knowledgeable and passionate. Um, and the fact that there is they're very still, respectful. Yeah. yeah. In comparison to many of the other mm -hmm. fandom groups, that the, I'm a there's part a lot of. you can say about fandom at the moment. But um, yes. I think um, you know, seeing how you know there was some uncertainty with some of the fans, but the, 
the vast majority, now this show is done and they've seen that story wrap up, they're like, yes, I, yeah. I love the way that this fits into the whole universe. Yeah. And so now you guys are a part of that. That's this, cool. this massive machine. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It, because it's like just hit the airwaves, it might be a little bit premature, but have you guys had any like cool fan interactions either on social media or anything like that um, since since it's been released? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, on um, social media, they're all, yeah, especially Twitter. They're very nice. They're yeah. very passionate and supporting. And compared, like you said, to other genres, I've never seen that when I've done other, like, drama or mm -hmm. comedy only. Mm -hmm. Like, this, it's incredible because they really do reach out they, yeah. in every different way. Very reactive. Yeah, which very, is nice. very active. And it's lovely. It's really cute. Yeah. I started Twitter just because I wanted to. I have, I think. A dozen, <laughs> dozens of followers. Um, <laughs> dozens, <laughs> but a lot, almost all of them are Stargate fans, yeah. and they've said really lovely things to to, to me and about the, um, you know, because I'm like, here's my first tweet. I hope this goes well, and and people respond immediately. They're like going well. Yeah, You're like, doing, doing good. good. <laughs> doing good. Uh, but but saying great things and saying literally saying welcome to the family. Yeah. And that that nice. was a really. That was a nice moment. Let's get him up to two dozen guys. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll be, that was your, party. I was your second follow all the second true. Yeah. It's like my mom and then Ellie. Like, Were Twitter. you guys right right there in like the director's chairs waiting to go out? It's like, oh I'd started Twitter. Yeah. Uh no, but you, you started it like only like a couple weeks ago, right? You you yeah. Twitter a bit yeah. later. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a latecomer, but yeah. Um There's just so many of them it's hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, yeah. A, we don't really Australians we don't really do Twitter that much. We don't really do it. So I got it. I got it when the show came out because it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's nice to have those, nice to have those touch points. Nice. Yeah, I didn't yeah, do Twitter nice. either before the show. Like I had Twitter, but I never updated. But like now, when this came out, it was fun because a lot of the fans were interacting. So yeah. It's fun to it like, is, you know, upload and react, and you retweet. And I still don't understand the retweet thing, but I'm doing it. I retweet everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's how I find something. Something, yeah, something I, is I don't happening. Know the reason you retweeted because I'm like, should I just answer as a comment or do I retweet? And sometimes I, I answer. I don't how to read the comments. I, I can never, I, I haven't figured out how to read actual comments yet. We'll chat. People, We're just from a different generation. Yeah, the people. <laughs> <laughs> figure it out. We thought I like, feel, yeah, I, I know. I feel like I should know these. <laughs> Speaking of fans and Twitter, uh, we've oh, got goodness. a super fan uh, that follows us on our, our weekly broadcast and is a um, uh, just a great supporter of okay. Stargate Command. So we want to give a shout out to uh, Gap Stargate and Gary. Yeah. Uh, Gary. So Gary. 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 What's up, Gary? And Gap, Star Gap, Gap Stargate. Gap, Gap Stargate. Stargate. I know that hey. one. <laughs> um, who's been super supportive of Stargate Command and, and all the things that we're doing. So thank you. And, and to all the fans that are out there watching right now and that will see this later, um, thank you guys so much for being here and being a part of this, and, and it's part of what makes Stargate so special. Um, speaking of fans, do you guys have any plans coming up where, where people can see you, or any any conventions or things that you guys are going to be at? Ooh. That's a good question. I don't know. I think... <laughs> we were talking about this before we went oh. live, actually, um, and I think I think you guys should should get out some cons. I'll, I'll give you some hints on, on, the, cool. on the best yeah. ones, for sure. Exactly. Love to meet you guys. With our yeah. social media uh, experience, we're a bit new to the game. And <laughs> tweet, tweet at them where you want them to go. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah we love suggestions. Uh, to where you want what, uh, let's, let's, and let's I'll try to figure what, out... What are your, your Twitter or Instagram handles? Uh, my Twitter... I think it's E-L-L-I Gaul G-A-L-L I'm pretty sure that's it. And same with my Instagram. So it's just Ellie without the E and my last name. All right. Yeah. Siobhan? Yes. <laughs> it's Siobhan, S-H-V-A-N, dot Aladdin, with two Ds, both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, it's Instagram is Pip Alexander, P-I-P, Alexander, and then Pip, and then uh, Twitter is Pip underscore Alexander. You'll know me by my followers. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, this, 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 doesn't, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem <laughs> correct. It's me. <laughs> um, are there any... Uh, any favorite stories we didn't get to? Is there anything we haven't uncovered that uh, is has been a lasting moment of making origins? Wow. I mean, there are thousands of stories. I wish I just had figured these questions out this morning or something. <laughs> because I'm so bad with answering things like that sometimes. But I mean, there was so many. 
it was really a, a lot of amazing moments on Origin, and I don't know. I think that one of these two should answer that question because I have <laughs> nothing more to say. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I think um, I think there was there was. Um, I really loved our our first moments when we were just coming on set together, like in the tent and everything, oh, you know, yeah. and all the like when you unfortunately were stabbed. Um, <laughs> and and there were just so, the the beautiful thing about Origins is all these really cool intimate moments. Um, and I think also for us in the warehouse going through the Stargate, yeah, that was just a lot, yeah. you know, revving it up and and like turning the the wheel, yeah. you know, the the, the inner ring. Um, and getting to step through, I'm like, on a personal geeking out level, I was like, I'm about to step through the Stargate. <laughs> so, <laughs> action. <laughs> and that was awesome. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was can't all, take that away from So me. cool. Driving the car, we already <laughs> talked about that. It was really fun. Shooting gun was fun. Um, stunts were fun. Fight scenes, they were, they were good fun. What was Comic Con like for you? Comic Con, did, uh, oh LA my! LA Comic Con. Right? I was like asleep. I think. Oh yeah, because <laughs> that was a brutal. You guys were up until what? We uh, I wrapped at three thirty a.m. and then I had to be up at seven a.m. for Comic Con. So I got home at about four thirty a.m. and I was asleep. That's rough. I was asleep by four thirty. Yeah, I I like sleeping more than two and a half hours. Guys at the after party. <laughs> yeah. 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 I yeah. think it, I, I, uh, stunts were great. I burned, uh, there was one bit in the stunts where I was being dragged. I don't think it was included, but um, I was dragged with a wire across the, the um, part of the palace. And because there was sand everywhere, it acted like sandpaper and just burned a hole in the back. Of, because I was like, hmm, what, what is that? And it was just, like, it literally burned through. And I thought that was, could be funny, funny, but it was, um, uh, <laughs> It was the stunts were great. Mm. Yeah, that's something I think I'll take away as well. That yeah, was fun. a lot of fun watching those happen. Yeah, yeah. Javon, fun getting stabbed. <laughs> fun getting stabbed. It was amazing <laughs> getting stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that was that was one of my favorite scenes when we did the whole stabbing thing because mm -hmm. it felt like everybody was so in sync when we were doing that scene, mm -hmm. both behind and in front of the camera. It was so like it was really incredibly hot to do that scene, warm, but and like yeah, but that, it was fun. That scene, we only got like the choreography for that. Um, on the day, yeah, didn't we? We did. We're, yeah, yeah, we're like, wait, oh yeah, this is a fight scene, and yeah. then just came on and we figured it out. Yeah, really we, quickly, I mean, and yeah. it sure did. It worked. <laughs> yeah. It worked really well. Yeah, it did. I, one moment I remember a lot it will be in the desert. I was changing in the desert because we were changing so oh, much between yeah. scenes. Oh yeah, you had two different yeah, sets yeah, of Yeah, I had two yeah. different. Uh, yeah. and I was changing in the desert, and it was a it was like around the sunset almost. It was a beautiful moment. Mm. Mm, that mm. desert yeah. sunset yeah. was. Yeah. It, all the pain of the day <laughs> melted away. <laughs> Any, anything, anything? Just for, uh, for me, honestly, as as a lifelong, and I'm not even just saying that, like, literally grew up with Stargate, just the entire experience, getting to hang out with these guys and watching it all come together, doing the interviews and behind-the-scenes stuff, and writing all of, like, the mission files, which you should go, definitely go and read, because it adds a <laughs> lot them. to the story. Um, yeah, the whole, the whole journey has been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's been great having you with us, man. Yeah. 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 I'll get you one of these yeah. t-shirts for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <we're>, got it. <laughs> Should get one with the that photo of us being like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the three guys. <laughs> He's gonna have it. <laughs> yeah. Um, any uh, any last words for the fans? Thanks for watching, guys. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for supporting and being so nice with all your kind words. It really is. It's it's really nice. Thank you. And thank you to Philip Swell followers as well thank you. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be thanking each one of you individually no but but thank you for for being um so supportive throughout the, the process just from the announcement all the way through through production and then and then during the release of the series and and personally just welcome welcoming all of us into the family is a really huge thing and it's and it's a it's a really an honor and privilege to be a part of that so thank you
Mrs. Well, Miss. Siobhan, Philip, Ellie, and Kieran, thank you guys so much for joining us here on this live Stargate Command experience. And to all of our fans, we will be back next Wednesday at 4 o'clock Pacific time for our next rewatch. And if you haven't caught all of Origins yet, you got to go to StargateCommand.co. you got to get that all-access pass and go watch Origins. It is fantastic. Uh, and these guys did an amazing job bringing Stargate back to life. Um, so we will see you guys on the other side of the event horizon.